almost. Uh, there we go. I'm ready. All right. So with your hands one side at a time, wrap around your neck and kind of press uniformly in with the whole palm surface and fingers surfaces and discern the shape of what's hard inside there. Oh, sorry, the whole palm. Yeah. I put my thumb in the dimple? Yeah, the thumb in the dimple and then wrap around with the whole hand and make full contact with your neck to feel the shape of what's contracted under your hand. Both sides. One side at a time. Okay, because, right, well, this is where my hand is now. So, so just stay on the right side. Don't cross over. Yeah. Okay, because that's way further off, but that's okay. That's right. Fingertips would be further below the hard ridge of bone at the base of the skull there. Here. Yeah. Okay, so my palm is not touching. Well, it could be. If you look at me, I'm going to show you on camera. Okay, I'll try to get that. Okay, well, my, but my palm, my fingertips can touch, but not my palm. Well, shape your hand so that you get con full contact. Okay, oh, wait. all right. So I think I understand where you're coming from now. What you're wanting to create there is a three-dimensional impression of the shape, not the surface, not the surface, the volume. Yes. Once you've done that, you can tell where there are hard or contracted places and there are softer places where you're, you can sink in. And you're discerning the contour of that volume. Okay. Yeah. And then do it with the other hand. And you're going to notice that they don't feel the same, that there's a different shape. Mm -hmm. So that tells you where you need to go on each side. Okay, I'm just going to compare. Oh, yes. Yeah, I get that. It looks like your left side was the more contracted side. Is that so? Um, I'm going to... I need to just do a little bit more comparison. Yeah, take your time. I would say it's different. There's contraction on both sides, but in different. On the left side, it's there's a lot like more on the outside, which is a different muscle. Yeah. So does that make sense? Yes, definitely. That's okay. typical. People are rarely the same on the two sides. So yeah, the right side feels tighter in between the, the fingers and the thumbs, that muscle we talked about, that feels tighter on the right. Yeah. I think. <laughs> They're both pretty tight though. Yeah. Okay. But yes. So choose the worst side as your working side. Okay. And the first thing you're going to do is learn to position your head so you go it, it, while feeling with the hand, go chin up and then slowly turn to that side until what the hard places under your hand are what contract. Uh-huh. Good. Now, once you've found it, do the other side. Oh, take the sound away? Yeah. Right now, you're just learning how to manually examine and how to position yourself to aim. Yes, I can feel, yeah, I can feel that. Okay. So now choose the worst side to work with first. Hmm. <laughs> They're both bad, so I can't be sure. I'll start with the right side. All right. In that case, uh, outstretch your right leg and leave your left knee upright. Okay. Let me see if I got you right. No, it actually should be reversed. Switch legs. Because you're going to be reaching with the left leg to cause yourself to curve like a banana to the right. 
Okay. Experiment with that by reaching with the left leg. Notice that how it causes your neck to push over to the right and you want to curve to the right. Yes. Take half the weight off of the right sole. Yes. Notice how it magnified that effect. Yes. So you're learning the sophisticated nuances of this maneuver. All right. So now uh, bring your head into the position where you can feel that hard place contracting. And then do the pirate's arg maneuver, the mouth open, lower jaw to the right, and then close until you hit a, a blockage, an obstruction to closing further. Well, I hit my teeth. Your, teeth. your teeth will not be able to meet. If they are, you'll have lost some of the side glide of the lower. Oh. Jaw. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the next step would be to take as big a breath as you can and gaze in your mind's eye at that contracted location that your hand feels. Uh huh. And then you slowly exhale and have your hand follow the tissue in as you relax. You bring your chin in, your back of your neck lengthens and your hand sinks in as the muscles relax. Okay, yes, I felt something. You, you feel yourself get softer than you were at the beginning? Yeah. Um, so now you know what I do on Sunday afternoons. <laughs> I should do this every day. So do you find that you need to do a lot of maintenance then? Is that what you're telling me? No, no. But uh, this type of thing, these kinds of explorations. There was a time when I was exploring for how to get into the Atlas. And that was a certain day that I was doing this multi-element action pattern. And it's bunches, right? You've got the head movement, the jaw movement, the hands, the breathing, the leg reach. So, yeah. so I was exploring for that. And that was a certain day where I first started exploring for it. So that was my whimsical joke to you about how I spend my Sunday. Oh, I see. So you're, you're, you're actually still doing expor explorations on a Sunday. Yeah, although I seem to have covered so much now that there's the stuff I'm getting at is actually getting more done through the tongue mudra than it is through anything else. Okay. But you okay. get the idea. If you get a somatic educator is really interested in the work, they, the person starts exploring in themselves for the, how they're put together. And that okay. reveals things that can be of use to other people once they refine the technique enough. Yeah. So, you feel like you have, a, well, you'll have the recording, but you feel like you have a, enough handle on this to recognize what you're doing? Um, I think so. I want to make sure I put the position of my fingers correct, though, because I'm a little confused about, so you start, you mentioned I'm going to use my other hand this time. Yeah, that's it. Do the other side and switch legs. Yeah, so you mentioned about starting out with the using the whole hand position like this. Yeah, right. And so the thumb is actually pointing tip down toward the upper ribs. That's oh, yeah. how you get the full contact of everything. So the thumb isn't pointing back or up, it's pointing down. And the length of the thumb is along that band of muscle from where the dimple of the earlobe is down the side of the neck. Does it, how does that look? <laughs> Well, if you're in good form, the fingers would actually be together rather than splayed apart. Okay, so how about that then? Yeah, that's better. And then there is a, a uh, an opening between the thumb and the rest of the hand into which the neck fits. Yeah, you know, if the, there's okay, a let me uh, sit up here and you can tell me if it's well, so. What? Look at my hand first. Just turn around. Okay. Turn around. I'm showing you. There is a V between the thumb and the rest of the hand, right there. Yeah. And that's and the neck fits right into that. 
Oh, your thumb's way down here. That's right. Thumb is down, but the base of the thumb is right up at that dimple. The tip of the thumb is way down because the thumb is, you know, from there, it's a good four inches from the first joint of the thumb to the tip. Yeah, because I thought the thumb was supposed to be in the dimple, the tip of the thumb. Well, that was my starting point for showing you how to examine. I was showing you where the atlas was. Okay. So when you wrap around, I said you have the whole hand in contact. That's where, right. that's how you can sense the shape of what's under your hand there. Yeah. Okay. I think I, so how does that look then now? Well, that's better. Turn sideways. That's for the view I need in order to tell. Yeah. Your thumb is way back still. It, it's got to be more down the side of the neck rather than the back of the neck. How is that? Yeah, that's better, but even more forward. You'd be able to feel the line of the jaw against the thumb. Why is that then? Better. And then the fingers are close together like a wedge and the whole thing wraps around so that the neck fits into that shape of the palm that I showed you. Does this look right then? It doesn't look like it's a good fit to me. Do you feel like your neck is, neck is fitting in there? How about not? Better, but again, check by feel. The criterion is, did your neck feel like it fits into that shape of your hand? It's like it's custom made. It's a fit. What about, where's your elbow? Is my elbow's way up in the air now, is that right? Oh, you see where I am here? Oh, okay, I need a break. So, so we're gonna do a how, about, how about this thing? Yeah, that's better, but again, Make it your intention that the neck fits into the hollow of your hand with no air space. By neck, you mean which part? This part? This part? Well, the length you just indicated. The whole That's it, the whole length there. So that's supposed to be covered? Yeah, that's supposed to be covered. And it's, you know, your hand is a certain width, like uh, I suppose four inches from side to side. So it's that much length of your neck that would be fitting in. What about that then? Well, that's better. Again, experiment for it till you find the fit. Okay. And they, so the, this fit here goes into the, the palm? It goes into the notch of the palm at the top there. The notch of the palm is this place here. That's the notch of the palm. Okay. And so the neck fits right into that below the ear. Okay. Well, how is that then? Oh, there you go. Now you're getting close to it. With more familiarity, you'll find the fit. Right now you're getting closer to it, which is fine. Okay, and your elbow is forward or to the side? No, it's to the side so that you can get a side meeting of the neck. The elbow is forward. You don't have an advantage okay. of feeling from the side. You end up feeling more from front to back if the elbow points forward. Okay, how's this then? Wait, can you yeah, see? Well, there you go. Now you're getting closer to it. Just do it by feel. You'll feel okay. that your hand fits over the neck. Right. neck fits into the palm. And then yeah. that way you can sense the whole three-dimensional volume that you're uh, enclosing. Okay. So whenever I push, because when we first talked about this, you had me grip those muscles like by the tip of my finger was in the hollow, but I don't do that anymore at all, right? No, that was just my a thumb. device to get you into the territory. Okay. I wanted you to be able to feel what contraction felt like around the atlas. Okay, gotcha. But the right. fact is the atlas isn't the target. The atlas is the recipient of all the muscular forces that are running okay. down the whole side of the neck. So whenever I'm pressing the thumb and fingers together, in when they're in that place that's right is it? it well again the purpose is to feel the shape if you're feeling the shape three-dimensionally then yes it's right if you're okay. just feeling with fingertips you don't have hardly anything to feel there okay can we let's do the left side then all right we haven't done like that right it's fine right leg down so that when you reach the right leg you're curving your neck up against your hand to the left so you go chin up and turn to feel the contracted place tighten. Yes. And then the pirate's arg to the left. Open first, right? Open, shift, and close to the bite limit. Okay. Breathe in fully, gaze into that place. 
reach the left, right leg so you bend a little bit left. Now you can feel what you're doing, deliberately cause that region in your neck to tighten. Uh -huh. And then slowly relax and with your hand, follow the relaxation into depth. The chin will come in as you relax, the back of the neck lengthens. And then it's good to do, do two free breaths immediately after the relaxation without any extra effort. Just take two full breaths to teach yourself to let go the rest of the way. This kind of stuff you deal with, you use to deal with whiplash injuries. Oh, okay. So, um, so you're not, the thumbs and fingers aren't doing any work here. They're just following the, the release. Is that correct? They're, the work that they're doing is to generate sensation. They're not doing anything like massage. Okay, got it, got it. That's, that's good to know. Yeah, they're just, they're just keeping you able to sense a region that you're not used to sensing. Yes. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. So you can twiddle with the fingers a little bit. You can jiggle anything to stimulate sensation in that location, but, mm -hmm. but no efforts to massage or to induce relaxation. The relaxation occurs from the pandiculation. Got it. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you can see this incorporates a great deal of sophisticated maneuvering and understanding. Yep. Thing. Yeah, that's um, that's. I think it's achievable, though. Well, it seems to be since you've got some degree of improvement. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'd like to try it a few more times once we're done. See if I can. Maybe I, I I might not. I might actually remember her to do it. That seems plausible. That sounds. Um, like it could happen. That could happen. Yes, that could definitely happen. And there is this yeah. recording, after all. Yeah, and with the recording, I should be good. <laughs>